Okay guys, I just wanted to post an update. I think this is really interesting. Uh, this is a cap uh, tret replication um, from IB Pointless 2, I believe is uh, the, the name he's taken on the forum. Anyway, I, as soon as I saw his post on overunity.com, I was very interested in it, and partly because there's a lot of a capacitor type effect that takes place in the Nathan Stubblefield coil that's been a real mystery to me for quite a while. And then also in the Daniel McFarland Cook patent that I've been uh, experimenting with replicating, I've begun to surmise that there was a capacitor type effect going on there as well. So as soon as I saw his thread and his uh, great discovery here, I started to replicate it. And I've done a lot of different experiments uh, with this, and this is the first one I, I was so excited about. And I still need to further do more testing. I need to uh, obviously test this in a Faraday cage. But um, I initially started with a 9 volt battery, just like you said, and did the whole LED thing. And then I actually started running it with no batteries at all, just capacitors. That was interesting. I was amazed how long the LED would stay lit with just capacitors. Um, it was really, really fascinating to me. Uh, the regular capacitors started to behave more like super capacitors and uh, I just didn't have the patience to see how long they would run in some cases but then I decided to replace the 9 volt battery with a just a little super cap here this is a five and a half volt super capacitor instead of the uh, 9 volt battery this super capacitor uh, when I started on it, it it was not a fresh charge or anything it had been sitting dead uh, for days and it was at uh, 0.629 millivolts so just over half a volt but I connected this up and the uh, voltage just continued to rise here um, about this point I started keeping track of some time and uh, just you know time to millivolts rising then I did something interesting down here I connected an LED over here on the uh, end on this last capacitor and I'll go over a little bit how I have these wired up here in a second but I connected an LED there just to see if this supercapacitor continued to charge while under load and I left the LED connected and I took three uh, readings and during the time the LED was connected the uh, supercapacitor continued to charge and you can see it's still uh, it's still charging over here we're now up at 0.685 and uh, you can see my multimeter here I have not been doing this uh, test run with the multimeter connected I tend to leave it disconnected and then take a reading it seems that the voltage climbs about a millivolt every 10 minutes give or take I think I could increase that a lot by using a uh, larger capacitors or maybe more of them in series but uh, like I said I'm really excited about this but before I get too excited I really want to test this uh, in a Faraday cage I want to try to rule out that it's some sort of RF radio frequency I don't know what what could be doing this but I've never seen anything uh, quite like this I've done a lot of experimenting I've done a lot of charging of uh, supercapacitors and the reason I went to a supercapacitor on this experiment is they usually don't lie I've had batteries do some pretty weird things uh, to me in the past but when you take a, uh, a pretty much dead supercapacitor that you haven't been messing around with you know for a day or so and it's you start a reading voltage on it and you see it increasing in uh, voltage like I'm seeing here and it's pretty exciting so great job to the uh, to the originator of this idea I believe his uh, username is I be pointless to uh, sorry I don't remember exactly on that but check it out over uni.com or energeticforum.com cap trapped Captret, I guess it is. Anyway, I'm continuing to experiment with this at a pretty good clip. So real quick, how I have it wired, I have it wired just as if you were going to power an LED here, as he shows in his uh, schematic. Um, but then what I've done is I've taken this negative lead, I've brought it down to the top of this capacitor, and then I've done the same thing where I've taken this negative lead, I've come down to the top of this capacitor, at which point these wires are just here for testing or connecting LED to. I then run the positive of this ending point here all the way back 
and that feeds into the positive of my supercapacitor. So the negative of my supercapacitor comes into the top head of the uh, this capacitor. My positive comes off the positive leg of this bottom one. So I kind of have them connected here in a series like this. Anyway, uh, very exciting stuff. I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, clean this up, get rid of the alligator clips, and uh, mount it on a board so that I can test it in a Faraday cage. But I just wanted to post an update. It's exciting stuff. Let's all experiment with this and uh, see if we can't take it to the next level. Okay, I thought I'd just add on a, a quick attachment of this video. I'm now climbing up from uh, 0.685 millivolts to 0.686 millivolts. You can see it's trying to uh, bounce up there a millivolt. And uh, like I said, just really exciting. You know, when I first put this on here and I was at uh, 0.629, I was like, yeah, it might climb 10 millivolts or something. But uh, this thing is just really taken off. And you can see here, just any second, it's going to level off at uh, 0.686. And I'm going to let it run through the night. And then uh, if it continues to climb through the night, which I certainly have every reason to believe it will, I will go ahead and do those further tests to try to eliminate other uh, possibilities that could be charging this circuit. So, anyway.